So picture this. I'm inquiring about this old truck for sale on this huge piece of property that used to be a farm. And I'm talking to the landowner and he happens to mention that, yeah, there's an old car way, way out back beyond the con the cornfield. I said, really? What kind of car is it? And he said to me, I don't know, it's been there a long time. Well, you can imagine for someone like me, that's an invitation to figure out what's going on. Come along in this video and it'll be uh, one of the, the most isolated areas that I've ever done a rescue on. Um, creepy things happen, strange things happen, all just surrounded by uh, nature just encroaching on the whole, the whole scene. Uh, I think you're gonna like this one. It was a lot of fun. So this is, this, wasn't expecting to run into this thing. Um, it's completely buried here. But I want to see if there's an engine in it. The hood is propped up, so I'm going to see if there's an engine in it. Yeah, there's an engine in it. There's no carburetor. But there's an engine in it. It's a V8, I think. Uh, yeah, it's a V8. It must be a 302. Wow. Don't know that I'll be tackling this one. Maybe. Maybe for a future day. It's the rear of the Granada. It's buried. It is buried, of course. Seems like everything I do lately is buried. There's a pretty healthy tree growing up next to the driver's door. One of the tail lights is gone. I think this is a 77. Maybe a 76. Sometimes you can tell from the tail light. They'll be writing on the tail light. I don't see any. Maybe Ford had stopped doing it by then. I don't know. But it's pretty dirty, so it's hard to tell. Access is, is tight on this thing. We got some kind of piece of farm equipment here. Uh, looks like maybe a, a hoe that you'd pull with a tractor. I mean, it's ancient. It's absolutely ancient. This is at the very edge of a cornfield. Look at this stuff. So if you tell me guys, 77, 76, 75, it's not a 78, I know that. All right, lots of things to check here. Um, obviously, the carburetor is missing. But I see the transmission fluid dipstick. Oh, look at that. That is red, red, red. Wow. Wow. That's great. That's great. Uh, I'm not super familiar with small block Fords. Here's the dipstick <clears throat> in a nice place. I mean, it's, it's kind of dirty, but I mean, I can read this, the dipstick reading. So, um, it's not horrible. It's a little over full, better than being dry. Um, this is important. We got to check what's going on under here. Wow. Well, that looks good. I mean, somebody put three layers of rags over this. So they wouldn't have done that unless there was a good reason, like this engine was still good. Um, all the 
Linkage is still here. Here's the fuel line. It looks to me like someone took the carb for something, but did not want to abandon the engine because of it. So that's good. That's good. There's no dirt in there. There's no water in there. Um, this thing's got all the factory markings on it. See these markings here? All these factory markings. I mean, you would think that those would be worn away by now. Some kind of sticker there. This, even the smog pump is still hooked up on this thing. That's probably not a good thing. The air conditioning is not hooked up. Oh, that's seized. That's seized hard. Um, maybe that's why it's not hooked up. But the smog pump is hooked up. The belt is toast. Absolutely toast on this smog pump. I've never seen anything like this. I mean, I don't know if you can see that. That's the belt to the smog pump. Basically, I touched it and it broke. Well, that's, that's a good thing. I don't want to have to deal with that. This thing is, is likely seized. So I don't have to want to deal with other things being seized. Let's see. Can I get it this side? Well, not easily. There's, there's trees here, but I see something interesting on the ground. I think that's to this car. It might even be the tail, the backup light. Whoops. The backup light housing. Why don't you give me the camera for a sec? This is the wheel. Again, completely, tire completely off the rim. Ah, man, this might be another car that was dragged here. See the Granada symbol there? It's got some rust in the rockers you can't see, but I mean, it's a pretty solid car. Yeah, this is definitely for this car. See that emblem right there? That's the same emblem right here. So this must go in the back. That's cool. I mean, we're going to find one of those, so that's cool. The grill is good shape. Let's see. What does this say? I think it says 76. So maybe this is a 76. All right. This stuff falls all over me. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to see if this thing's seized. First order of business. Um, if you can get down in here, I can get at the pulley, which is nice. And uh, it's really nice because the AC belt was on the outside. And, of course, that belt's not there. So I'll be able to grip on that outside pulley. Look at this. Look at this uh, power steering belt. Whoop, careful. Look at this. This is also completely shot, this power steering belt. This thing has been here a super, super long time. The only belt that's good at all is the alternator, and it's not original. I wonder if these are the original belts in this thing. We'll have to try to get inside and see the odometer. All right, let's see. I'm going to be able to... This is a pretty small wrench. I don't know if I'm going to be able to get this thing spinning or not with it. Okay. You, you get in position and tell me if the crank moves. Okay. I don't think I'm going to slip, but I've only got one arm to pull on this. So, ready? Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, it's tight. Oh, it's really tight. Oh, oh yeah. Look at that. Oh. Oh man, can you believe it? No carburetor. Sitting out here forever. Look at this. <laughs> Unreal. This thing is turning beautiful. This thing is turning beautiful. I can even feel 
it gets a little tougher on the compression stroke, like right here. I let the compression bleed off. So it was stuck, um, but it wasn't completely seized. It was starting to, but it wasn't completely seized. Wow. This is awesome. How many times have we spun it? Have we gone around twice yet? Pretty close. But it's clear. We don't have any stuck valves or anything. That's insane. That is insane. Wow. Wow. <laughs> that's, that's, I didn't expect that. <laughs> I thought this thing was going to be a bear. I mean, look at this engine. I thought it was going to be a bear. And it wasn't. So, kudos to Ford Granada. Um, what do you think? Should we put a battery in this and see if it'll spin over? It's got oil in it. I mean, why not? At least I'll get a battery and see if it's got spark. I assume that this is points. But I don't really know. No, it's not. It's not points. But it's in decent shape. I mean, I got to clean that rotor. The rotor's really crappy. A lot of stuff on it. But um, so this has some kind of electronic ignition that I don't understand, frankly. I don't know Ford's that well. So let's hope it doesn't give me any grief. There's no checking for spark. So all we got to do is make sure it's clean in here and um, disconnect the fuel line. Well, there's no carb. <laughs> the fuel line's already disconnected. Uh, oh, there it is. There's the spark right here. There it is. It's the uh, Ford Dura Spark, I think it's it's called. My I had a Jeep CJ that had this in my. 80 Ford F100 had it. They've got a bad rep. I haven't had any trouble with them, but I don't know if they're any good or not. I do have a spare one of those at home. Um, they're identified. There's a bunch of different kinds, but they're identified by the color of the plugs. Uh, a blue plug is the one I've got at home. I think that's blue. I can't really tell, but I think that's blue. In any event, um, we're not going to let that stop us, for sure. Let's check the brakes. Of course, it's stuck. Well, that's not good. <laughs> um, there is nothing, nothing in the front cylinder, which is for the rear brakes. And this one, it's not so bad. I mean, it's possible that this thing will have brakes to the front. Now, heads up on these Granadas. A lot of people know this, a lot of people don't. This is basically a Ford Falcon from the 60s. Um, and because of that, these have disc brakes. And these disc brakes are a bolt-in for many 60s Fords. Mustangs, Falcons, Ford people will be able to comment more than I can about how many different Fords these fit, but it's quite a few. Um, if these ever show up in junkyards, the disc brakes disappear the first day. And this one obviously has them. Not that I'm recommending this be taken apart for his disc brakes, because we're going to get this thing running. <laughs> so Christina noticed this. This has been eaten by something. Um, I'm not sure what this is for. I guess a wire went through here at one time, but whatever it is, it's not used anymore. But I don't see any evidence of other things being eaten. The plug wires are in good shape. Um, these, are, these are cool plug wires. Um, six millimeters, so they're, they're old, but they're, I believe these are, four, oh, look at this. There's a date on them, 1976. Motocraft. So these are Ford spark plug wires. I don't think I've ever seen those before. These wouldn't be the original plug wires, though. <laughs> I think that's a little bit impossible. But 
Somebody must have replaced them with, with factory Ford parts, maybe a dealership. So I found this on the front seat. Carburetor tune-up kit. That looks like the rebuild kit for the carb that belongs on this car. Borg Warner. Okay. I was hoping to find the electrical connector for the coil because it's missing. But what I could do is see if I can research how that gets hooked up. Yeah, there's nothing in there. Nothing. Look at the time. That's pretty cool. That's pretty cool. Yeah, the key's in it. Wow. Luxurious. Luxurious. Interior is really not that bad. Considering what we used to do in the headliner shot. Why do you take it off though? There's no headliner. Look at this. Look at that. <laughs> I love manual windows. I would take them over power windows any day. Is back door unlocked? I think so. I think there's a key in the trunk. I think. There's no car parts in here, except there's a battery hole down. That's it. Oh, look at this. Look at that right there. Doesn't say the year. It sure gives you the assortment of tires you could get on it. University of Alabama. You are far from home. All right. Something I hate doing is opening the trunk, but look at this. The key is actually in the trunk. Oh, wow. Look at that. Look at that. Now that's interesting because there it is, yet it's got the backup light. So the backup light up front must be a spare. You wonder why this was removed. I mean, there it is. That's pretty cool. That is pretty cool. In fact, yeah, this is the one that was there. See? That goes right like that. So this is the one that was in here. Always a mystery with these cars. I don't see anything else that's readily obvious in here that. Oh, look at that snakeskin. Oh, man. Wow. Wow. That's a big one. That's a big one. Crazy amount of leaves in here. Mm. Oh, look at this rust. Whoa. That's weird. Why did it rust there? How did all these leaves, the trunk must have been open, right? How did all these leaves get in here? All right, let's do a gas smell test. Yeah, there's no, not really any way for a wasp to get in here. Famous last words. <sighs> Okay. <laughs> How do you remove a Granada fuel cap? I guess not easily. Oh, it's jammed. It's jammed. Yeah, it's jammed. I'll have to work on that later. Six by nine speakers. So popular back in the 80s and 90s. Oh, look at, that's where the backup light goes. 
right there. Did not realize it. All right, I'm gonna throw that in the trunk so we don't lose it. Oh, wow, look at that carpet. Like new. So all that, all this deterioration probably happens sitting here. The miles is 17,677. What's that? Not sure what that is. Some brass fitting for something. This is the door lock piece for here. Might as well put it on. I'm cleaning the connections on the battery. They're uh, not super dirty. Okay, I'm going to throw the battery in. I'm going to see if this guy will crank. I'm going to hook my trigger up so I don't have to get inside of that gross, gross car. See if there's any smoke. Ooh, this this mosquitoes around here like you read about. Whoa. Alright, let's see if it cranks. Get out from under it, in front of it, just in case. It's in gear or something. Nothing. Nope, nothing. Nothing. I think it's a connection issue. These are sides. Try it again, but I don't think that's going to make any difference. Okay. All right, just going to clean off these main connections here. This one goes down to the starter. We're getting nothing out of this, so I'm thinking it's not the starter, but it could be. It could be. This thing's sitting on the ground, and this is not dirty at all. Not at all. So the problem is not this connection. That's perfectly clean. And I'm just going to put that one right back in. Okay, this one's coming out now. There's a lot going on with this one. There's all kinds of connections and stuff, so it's possible that this is the this is the bad connection. Mm, not great, but not terrible. So I'm going to clean this up. So this one was super clean. That's not the problem either. That makes me think that it might be the starter. I'm gonna try this once again. Now that everything's clean, I don't expect it to work. Nothing. All right, now I'm gonna see if the lights work, because if the lights come on, then we'll know we're getting electricity to the, to the wiring harness. Holy cow, the radio's on. Yep, 
scared? No. Look at this. This speaker in the back's making noise, and there's a light. And I think I know why nothing's working, because it's not. Hear that? Mm -hmm. yeah. It's coming out of the back. Keys on. All right, let's see if the headlights work. Right. Mm. Cool. Well, we are definitely getting voltage. We're definitely getting voltage to the car. The headlight switch is fused. So I can't test the headlights, but there's definitely voltage to the car, which tells me the starter must be stuck. So I'm going to take a look at that next. I'm hitting the starter, trying to free it up. I didn't get to hit it very hard. It's hard to get in there. Nothing yet. Okay, I'm gonna go get a light mm. and a bigger hammer. back ran into this thing again I'll probably do that five more times you know I didn't talk about this yet this thing is in the middle of nowhere I mean when I gotta walk back to get tools it's it's quite a walk so that's why this is taking a, a bit of time it's actually starting to get late in the day so I'm gonna try see if I can see the starter and whack it with this Oh yeah, that's it. Yeah, I can. Yeah, okay, while I'm doing this, hold that in. Yeah. I just banged on the solenoid quite a bit. This time not with my wimpy hammer, but with the pipe ring. So we're going to try it. I'm just jumping the solenoid to remove it as an, as an option, as a problem. Whoa! Beautiful. Beautiful. All right, now let's see if the trigger works. So the starter and the solenoid appeared to be screwed up, but definitely the solenoid. The trigger still doesn't work. Not funny. Well, we don't need it. We have a way to turn it over, <laughs> so we don't need it. Uh, I don't know why it's not working, but get a get a shot in here of it turning over. Don't worry about the spark.
beautiful 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 um, it's turning over good no issues no issues um, this is hot holding it here that starter is drawing a lot of current I think it's it's probably in bad shape I mean this thing is hot for only turning it over for 10 seconds but that's okay um, we're getting there we got to figure out the ignition get a carburetor and uh, source of fuel and we're ready to fire this baby up that's all for today um, we've been at it for a while but I think I think we've gone as far as we can okay we're back at it at the Granada um, two tasks today we have to get the carburetor on and figure out the wiring to the coil and the distributor if you look at the carb here a um, little bit of a, a challenge in that there's three studs that are super long and a missing stud. This carburetor is supposed to have a spacer plate, which I don't have. Um, so I'm going to try to make it work without the spacer plate, and hopefully it does. And I need to find some nuts and a bolt for that. I did bring um, some, some packages on your right here, some packages of bolts. So I'm going to see, see if I can get so, see if I can find something and I need to find the wiring plug that plugs into this From the electronic ignition, so we got to work it out for us So I've got a number of bolts and nuts and I found this one this kind of looks like it'll fit the nut I don't know what's up with the nut, but it's jammed on there But I'm gonna see if this fits And it does I mean that's unbelievable luck unbelievable luck I'll have to stack it a bit with washers. I think it's a little too tall, but it works. Now I need to find some nuts for those. So that's next. So luck would have it. I had exactly three of these. No, I didn't plan it. I had no idea what thread these were, if they were fine, coarse, whatever, metric, non-metric. And I still don't know, honestly. I know that they're coarse, but I don't know if they're metric or not. And I also found the plug. So this plug... It's the same as this plug. So someone took this wire for whatever reason that goes between the two. Um, I'm just going to create my own that go between here and here. And I think the ignition will be done. So that's the next step. So I did some research on the wiring. So I think I know how to do it. And I even brought the right colors of wire that I need. This four wires that I need to hook up. So the big question is, how do you replicate this plug when you don't have it? Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take the pins from the plug. I'm going to use one of these solderless connectors here. It's called a, a female butt connector. And I'm just going to slide it on like that. Have my wire run right it over to that and slide one of these butt connectors on that as well. And I'll just match it color for color. So it ought to work. Okay, so all you got to do is strip the wire back a bit, twist it like that, feed it through the butt connector, and take this. You see how it's got a red, blue, yellow color code just match it up to this so this is blue put it in the blue slot and squeeze connection done so yeah so i need approximately this much wire so i'm just going to cut it and do the same thing that i did on the other end So again, splice it back, twist it, put on the butt connector, we can find one, line it up with blue, and squeeze. 
this jumper wire is now complete. I need to do it for all three, and then I need to do the, the plus and negative side of the coil. Okay, so this is what it looks like. We get the blue, black, and the yellow matching the purple, black, and orange. It's close, close enough colors I could get. And now we have to run them to here. Very simple. These connections, of course, have been exposed to the elements for who knows how many years. So they're a little dirty, but I'm pretty sure that they're going to conduct. So here's my yellow. That's going to go to orange, which is right here. So I'm just going to slide it on that pin right in there. Okay, done. Now I've got blue. It's going to go where the purple is, which is the pin next to it. Done. Now this black had broken off at some point. I guess whomever took the wiring harness broke it. So that one I've already connected. So the coil is now connected. Now I need to connect. I mean, the, the distributor is now connected. Now I need to connect the coil. So the terminals on the coil are really dirty. This is supposed to have a special plug, um, a Ford only plug, big piece of plastic that wraps around and connects. But I looked at those online. They were like $60 for a piece of plastic and two short wires. So we're not doing that. <laughs> we'll do it my way. Yeah, there's the two connections. I have to figure out which one's plus and minus, but if I get in close, I'll be able to see it. All right, so what I did is the green wire comes off the harness. I can't find where it goes, so I just nicked the wire on the harness and hooked an alligator clip to it and ran it right to the negative side of the coil. Positive side of the coil, I'm going to run to the battery like I usually do. And I've shown you this already. This is the distributor wiring. So as far as the wiring goes, I think we're good to go. So the next step is the carb. All right, we're going to try to see if this thing has spark. Holy cow, I think that fired. Don't you think that fired? It scared me, I don't know. Did you see any? I can smell it. No, I was too scared and closed my eyes. I can smell it. That fired. <laughs> That's impossible. That is not possible. Smell it? Mm -hmm. That fire. I guess it's got spark. There's no carburetor. There hasn't been a carburetor on it for who knows how long, decades, and it fired. I guess my, I have a hell of an ignition system here. <laughs> All right, on to the carb. That's smoke. It fired. See the smoke coming through the intake? I can smell it. It seems like every one of these videos, I say, I've never seen that before. But I haven't. I haven't. It's like this thing we're in yesterday. It actually fired. I'm probably going to say that a hundred more times and irritate you guys. But I, I, I just, I can't believe what I just witnessed. I really can't. I think that that's, that's humidity. Look at the water that's on this thing. That's humidity. There's no way it's smoke. Watch. I bet if I wipe this away, it goes away. <laughs> I don't know. It's coming from inside there, inside the intake. I don't have any idea, but I can tell you that the battery's not connected, so it's nothing, nothing we're doing. All right, here's a brand new carburetor. It's probably worth more than the car. But we're not getting anywhere without it. hanging up on something, but this, 
This is hitting the linkage, so this has to come out. That's all right. We can get that out of there. All right, we moved a little bracket that was on the valve cover bolt <coughs> that was getting in the way of the throttle linkage. Let's see if that helped. Oh, yeah. Beautiful. Beautiful. It's on there. Okay. Now I'm going to attach my found nuts and bolts and finish this up. Carburetor's bolted down. It was a little tricky because there's supposed to be that half inch spacer and there is no spacer here. Um, so what I did, it fits down, just bent this out of the way so it fits down on the base good and I just use larger nuts to essentially act like a stack of washers. Now I'm going to hook up the fuel source, which is here, and hook up my funnel fuel line patent pending. Best to always use a flare wrench on this stuff because it's very soft. These connections are very soft. Bra usually brass. I don't know. This one might be steel. Given the incredible quality of this carburetor. But all I need this carburetor to do is last for today. All right, so this is all hooked up. Now I'm going to hook up the line. All right. My trusty funnel fuel line. This connection here is super, super small. I'm not sure where they thought that that would work, in what universe that would work. Um, I'm going to try to get it to hold gas, but if it doesn't, I'm going to have to rig something else up. Moment of truth. We got some gas in the funnel fuel line, just a little bit. I'm going to uh, put some chainsaw gas in the carb, and we're going to see if this thing fires. This is, this is probably one of the most exciting ones I've ever done. I don't know why, it just is. Okay, where's the chainsaw gas? Here. Oh yeah. I went to get the fire extinguisher. Uh, let's try it. Ignition's hooked up. Let's give this a whirl. Hooray! Come on, baby. Good sign, good sign. Come on, baby. It's firing, so the ignition's working that I wired up. Okay. I got to get on this throttle. This is kind of hard to do. I got to open this throttle a bit. I'm going to try the trigger again. This is just really hard with me having to be in two places at once. It simply doesn't work. I need to, need to be working that throttle. And it just it won't work. There's something wrong with this solenoid. Okay. I'm going to try propping the, the idle open via the idle screw. Because I need to be over here, but I can't be because the solenoid's over here and it's giving me trouble. Oh, that didn't work. That didn't work like I had hoped.
I think the accelerator pump's working. Yeah, the accelerator pump's working. Okay. I think I think I can use the screwdriver to Okay, that's open. That's open. So let's give that a try. All right. Yeah, baby. Yeah. Come on, come on. Come on. Ooh, this is hot. All right. By the way, don't do this at home. Um, I'm just doing this for entertainment, so don't do this kind of stuff at home. Okay, I'm going to figure something out here. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to wire up my cord here direct to the starter so that I can reach over and touch it. I don't want this to spill. I think we're ready. So in this position, I can work the throttle. And still work the starter. It's not ideal. Trust me, I know that. Ugh. Okay, I'm gonna try it again. Come on. Woo. We got hot connections here. Hot connections. Come on. Thank <laughs> you. 
unbelievable. <laughs> that is the most gross smell of burning something and oil and chainsaw gas and who knows what else. That was awesome. <laughs> Can you believe it? Mickey Mouse jury rigged wiring. Whew. Mickey Mouse carburetor setup. Unreal. And a guy who knows nothing about Ford ignition systems. <laughs> wow. Wow. So we are we are riding on quite a high right now. Having started this up, um, we're going to put some more fuel in it and see how long we can keep it running. Um, unfortunately, one of the belts that went was the ace, the power steering belt. And it looks like that's the only belt on this that runs the fan. So in order to run it longer than a couple of minutes, I'm going to have to figure that out. Okay, let's give this guy another try. Come on, baby. Huh. Okay, why? Why? Let's try it. I'm going to check for spark with my spark checker. We lost spark. Okay, so that explains it. Where did we lose spark? This is still can. Oh, look at that. That's why we lost spark. Mm. My green wire came undone. Okay, well, we'll fix that. Um, I'm not sure what happened, but it got caught in something. Okay, that's actually good news. Because it explains why it won't run. Okay, so I spliced the green wire with some blue wire. Just going to make sure that the connection is good. My battery's getting low, as you've no doubt heard. Okay, connection's good. So we've got ignition again. There should be plenty of gas in it now from all the messing around when the ignition wasn't hooked up. <coughs> so we're gonna give it a try. Whew, this is, this is nerve wracking. Come on, baby. Come on. Go check, see what the back looks like, how it sounds. Sounds great here. Great. Look at that. It's idling. <laughs>
it's idling. Woohoo! <laughs> Unreal. Yeah. Go for it tough, man. All right, we're going to shut it down for lack of lack of coolant, lack of water, but oh, yeah, I hate to even shut it off. <laughs> oh, man. I don't know why this one's so satisfying, really. I guess because the first time I saw this thing, sitting in a cornfield surrounded with old agricultural equipment i don't even know how it got here um i've already talked about the fact that this is not near any road it's not even near a footpath it's just in the middle of nowhere and you just walk through grass and fallen trees and all that and then this car is here for an unknown reason without a carburetor and without ignition wiring <laughs> and yet we were able to get it working. <laughs> All right, back at you soon. I'm going to see if it goes into gear. It does. It goes into gear. What an awesome car, man. Don't want to get it hot. It's not hot because we're letting it cool. In between each of these cycles, we're letting it cool quite a bit. In fact, it's starting to get a little dark. Unreal. Unreal. Let's see if we can fire it again. Of course. I'm going to see if it's charging. It is. Check this out. It's charging. Not a lot, but it's such a high, such a low idle. I'm not surprised. This thing's awesome. All you people out there that asked me to do this Granada, thank you for pushing me, because. I wasn't sure I was going to do it, but thank you. I'm just going to run it out of gas now. There's no sense leaving gas in the cylinders or anything. Just run it out and then button it up. That's all she wrote. What an awesome day. <laughs> what an awesome day.